So <clears throat> how do we build sustainability by design? So, so this is really like nothing more different than actually learning more from the startups and learning more how startups are built. And uh, when we look at this more, more closely, it becomes uh, more about an exercise of reallocation of existing resources. And when we look at startups and, and we think about how is it possible even that something that didn't exist before without having any resources in the beginning, zero resources, just nothing else but people and ideas can actually grow to compete and even win big existing companies in the marketplace. So any logic would apply to, to say that that's just not even possible, but of course it is. And that's the whole point of why, why we see that innovation is, uh, or not that we see, but why it's true that uh, innovation is best built by um, this type of models. So how does it then happen in practice is also a lot that where we can learn to, to, to do that uh, in the context of of new building new functions like ecosystem operator and it starts from the reallocation of existing resources and and that's in simple terms for an individual a new talent or, or an enter potential entrepreneur basically starting to do something as a side hustle or a side project working on their free time or reducing their other things to find more time uh, to work on what they truly want to be uh, building and using the existing position, whether it's a current job or doing consultant, consult consultation as a business uh, to acquire finance to actually build something that is not financially sustainable. And what we can also uh, look from, from how uh, we don't see and don't want to see startups being built uh, specifically with uh, loaned money uh, is the, the, the traditional approach, the, the, you know, the school book approach about how do you start a business. That you just plan, you, you, know, you do a business plan, you plan a project, you create financial plan and forecast for that. You acquire initial funding to start and operate, so you need your, your startup initial startup capital and then you need operational capital to the point until you find uh, the sustainability so then you 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 do you do, do the business plan you acquire the loan or other funding and then you set up the operations you spend the budget you have for setup you run the operations on fixed budget uh, in ongoing uh, fixed costs and in the, along the way, you try to find revenues or funding, uh, additional funding to achieve the financial sustainability along the way based on unvalidated assumptions at the time of planning and budgeting or models tried to find along the way while the clock is ticking. And the clock is ticking, is, that's like the time bomb that is built into the funding mechanism. So, um, this is a traditional way and, and, uh, and this is the most common way that uh, even the, the, the startups long time ago had to start to find new ways of, of building. But this same model is very much in force and used in uh, creating, uh, for example, uh, ecosystem projects, ecosystem uh, support functions. Uh, typically with public funding. So there isn't much difference in how these types of things are built um, for ecosystem uh, functions. Um, but this model for sure does not work for the ecosystem operator setup. So when we look at uh, where and why these things are the way they are. Um, when we look at the, from the startups, when they are building a validated business model, so you are you know, starting an accounting business, or you're starting a restaurant, you're starting another 
burger joint or you're not starting another coffee shop, you're starting another hair cutting place. Um, basically, the whole business model is validated in the markets. It works. All the financials can be easily be researched. What type of money, what type of pricing, what type of location you need, what type of operation cost you can have, and so forth. And you can expect all of those to be true. You can expect them to be very close to true. As, as such, you can apply traditional approach to such start a business, and you can start, um, you know, you can even do that with loan money. So you can even get bank loan, business loan to, to start that. You don't need to really justify that this would work. Uh, in a similar level that you would have to do for something that is not validated. So we're talking about manageable risk and for that type of operations, it's totally okay to use the traditional approaches to set up these operations because uh, most of the things are known and most of the things can be calculated. Most of the things can be assumed. Most of the things can be assumed to work. So what we know then from the startup specifically, when they are building an idea, a new business model that is unvalidated in the marketplace, uh, totally something that doesn't exist, and we put traditional approach on that, we can clearly see that we are talking about unmanageable risk. So this is something that if the more there is unknown things in there, the less uh, it can be managed the risk and the less applicable any traditional funding or traditional approach is. And that's why, of course, there are the whole risk finance, VC funding, where the, it's built into the finance model of a VC fund that, uh, that it's more of a, a, a model that can sustain uh, X number of failed ones as long as one of the 10 or two out of 10 succeed. So it's building the finance instrument. At the same time, that doesn't change anything on the startup side itself. The startup is still doing the unmanageable risk approach and, and buying a runway, but it works from the financial side. And then of course, on public sector, there is other risk finance for startups, but we could say that majority of ecosystem development finance is also risk finance. It has, the means to try something on the marketplace and see if that works and if it can find sustainability for its own operation along the way and if it doesn't it's gone but it's built into the, the finance instrument model but again that doesn't mean even if you're getting that funding that it would be somehow of a validation that the model that was presented is actually proven and tested in the marketplace so regardless of that we're talking about unmanageable risk. So again, we need to look more for less traditional approach to find, again, more manageable risk. So the, the more it's unknown, the, 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 the more we have to rely on less tradi traditional and more entrepreneurial approaches to find more manageable levels of risks where we can uh, find success by design. So a less traditional approach, uh, thinking of sustainability by design, starts from, uh, uh, we use the term commit here, is to actually design a model that, that, uh, that from the design itself, like not even looking at anything on the, the, the things inside the design or the plan, uh, just looking at the design itself, is it designed to potentially fail or not. And when we look at the traditional model, is it, it is actually designed to fail by design, meaning that, that the model itself that is being applied has limited timeline to find success or it will automatically fail. It's like a, it's like a time bomb. So the, the, the sustainability by design uh, is to avoid that model and instead design a model that is not just by simple looking at the, the, the design itself, not designed to fail. It doesn't have a time bomb, uh, meaning that when you run out of money, it's the end of the game. <clears throat> so 
So uh, it's rather built around vision, mission and strategy. So building the big picture, seeing the big picture, what we want to build, where do we want to get, and then acquiring initial people resources by a parcel time allocation model to start and operate. Uh, set up operations one by one in where in a way where each becomes sustainable on their own before moving forward. So not trying to have 10 things we need to get working in the same time in a synchronized way before it can be sustainable, but just having one working on that, if can't make that work, doing another one, but doing it with people resources that uh, have parcel time allocation models. So uh, basically in a startup, that means the um, uh, working part-time somewhere else to, to build your financial that you need to be able to operate uh, and use the time elsewhere. So in the ecosystem context, that would mean that the ecosystem support organization, whether they're the public sector or the existing actors, does the same. Either they give their free time or the organization accepts that they can use 10% of their time, 20% um, of time, or they can two people can use 50% of their time or 10 people can use 10% of their time uh, for these ecosystem activities and something that is permanently allocated it's in a calendar. And uh, then working with uh, limited or shared fixed operating costs. So, so meaning that uh, really avoiding or outsourcing fixed operating costs. So this means uh, not only the people, but also if there are ser servers to run, can we run some of the, fact that the things on, on someone else's server? Uh, can we use the spaces and, uh, and this type of sharing of resources that is very easy to see, but then going further and seeing what are the other things where we can, uh, the things that we don't actually need to buy, but we can use someone else's. And then grow these resources and specifically new, uh, new revenues to build uh, financial sustainability along the way. So it's really starting from nothing and, uh, and, and growing those resources along the way instead of finding a budget, doing a plan, allocating all of those resources, putting it in motion and ex expecting it to work. Uh, that's where a lot of the, the failed startups come from, but that's also where a lot of other failures come from, is uh, trying to predict the future, building a model around that, and then failing in practice. <clears throat> so the sustainability by design in the context of ecosystem operation activities is built on having a clear mission that is ecosystem level, as together achieved through the ecosystem workshops and forum, having a strategy like a strategy um, that we just covered for financial side, but also strategy for the other activities. Um, and a vision of where do we want to actually develop our ecosystem towards, how that vision looks like so that we can find alignment between all of the actors. And then not to start by thinking of where is new resources. Uh, there is no new pockets of money somewhere that there's just unallocated money waiting that uh, is seeking to be you know, put in the ecosystem development. <coughs> All the budgets that are in operational use are used somewhere. They are in use somewhere. In addition, there are then funding instruments uh, like the uh, like the support funds, uh, economic development funds, and so forth, uh, that are given. But the way the, the, the operations are not uh, designed to be sustainable, and they act and, and work very much the same way as, uh, as, as uh, using a tr the wrong type of instrument uh, to build something that needs to be sustainable. So the thing here is to look at the new activities and needed budget allocations, but 
looking those from where we can reallocate existing resources and re existing budgets step by step in small pieces by multiple actors contributing little uh, into these new activities and allocations and clearly separating the financial from the human resources and really using the human resource reallocation of people's time towards these new activities uh, and then separately money to, to, to do things that are uh, that the new activities actually need uh, money for, but not money for paying people's salaries. So that's the basic model of a less traditional model, but it's based on exactly the same ways how uh, how other things can be built and what, how startups get started in the beginning before they are able to acquire additional financing. So just the basic model of how this could look. We have in the ecosystem, we of course have the ecosystem existing organizations and we have the new entity, new functions that we want to be built. So, but the new function and the ecosystem operations are built there to contribute for the existing organization's efficiency and, and to start improving those problems that cannot be improved by the organizations themselves because a separate ecosystem operating and orchestration function is needed. So uh, there are of course many other ways but there's just a, a, a design model to show that that for example each organization could put 5%, 10 or more, 10%, 15%, but 5% reallocation of own ecosystem related operations budget per each year. So every year increasing five more percent of giving that to someone else to find a better model that will help us. Direct financial budgets on ecosystem operations side only for variable and unavoidable fixed costs. So only to be used to those types of things that are not fixed and specifically personal costs. So this is to, to um, rent a venue, uh, get experts uh, to help educate, buy a license into something or whatever that may be that, that is, is a unavoidable or a valuable cost. And then linear reallocation of people resources. So really uh, contributing organizations. So, uh, if, if uh, this is what we did also in, in, in Helsinki a long time ago when we needed to activate these ecosystem activities, is simply to say how many hours per week I can do, I can use for these ecosystem uh, development activities. So, is it like five hours per week, 10 hours per week, 20 hours per week? And then, then uh, uh, what that should contribute for, or is it something that it's like starts five five hours a week for three months? If there's good success on that side, then we increase that and so forth, or we give the same for for another person and another person. So on the ecosystem operations side, to avoid so that no core people resource uh, costs, so no fixed salaries until new reoccurring revenues are secured. So, so that having a clear model that we don't kill our own baby by design. So that it only can carry as much that it can carry, but the plan all the time is to increase that. And then having a logical KPIs in place. So the contributing organizations should benefit from the ecosystem operators' activities in reduced operative and variable cost due to use of shared assets. So the more assets are allocated uh, for the ecosystem operators, whether those are you know, uh, software and uh, um, open source software, whether those are uh, planning resources or tools under Creative Commons and uh, open source and so forth. 
the less there should be fixed costs. Or if we want to build something together, if we can, because of the orchestrator is there to look at, uh, if we build that together, it costs us. If, if, it, if we do it alone, it costs us 100. If we do it together with someone, it can be 50-50. If we do it with three, with five, and so more, uh, that reduces the cost. But if nobody is looking at these activities, it's hard to, or too impossible to find. Ecosystem operators KPIs is validated value built for contributing organizations. So really finding KPIs that are logically matched based on the model itself. And then, so this is how to establish uh, the foundation for sustainability for long term. And on top of that, when the foundation is there for operational sustainability, the size doesn't matter. However small that is, wherever that can be started, depending on the size of the ecosystem, the commitment level of the contributing organizations and so forth, that is the starting point. But it should be built in such a way that it's not a ticking time bomb that will end just because the, it was never designed to be sustainable. So, and then on top of that, other funding and revenues are there to accelerate, not for the core costs, not for the base sustainability. So the overall ability to execute and do will grow and it can periodically get higher with other funding, but the base model should be based on sustainable approach. And the more there are new revenues from new services beyond those values built for contributing organizations, then that is totally new operational capacity that can also sustain new uh, uh, monthly fixed cost, even in the form of salaries of people. So that's the base model. And in the operations, it's simply to start increasing the number of committed ecosystem organizations. So the more organizations commit to provide people's time five hours a week or 10 hours a week or whatever hours a week and whatever 5% of their own budget that is going into the ecosystem operations to be reallocated and used by, um, by the, the organizations um, or, the, or the operation to find cost reduction for the same for the year and for further, the more resources the ecosystem operations will have. Any use of project funding money is uh, only for variable costs. If failures, no terminal failures, meaning that, that the, the core functions are not dependent on project funding. So if the core functions and the, the sustainability is put on top of risk funding, project funding, it will fail if it doesn't exceed the necessary revenue targets. And then to increase uh, the overall capacity use only part of the reoccurring revenue to fix costs like 50% or less to build a buffer and increase budget for bigger variable costs. And bigger funding contributions. So this is something like uh, if there is an ecosystem where key stakeholders say, but yeah, we understand this, but that's too slow for us. So we really want to establish that much faster uh, we want to do something big and we see this also happening, then the model there doesn't change. Even if it's 1 million, 10 million, 50 million, whatever the money would be to establish that, uh, that should be then put in a sustainable by design type of approach, uh, like a foundation model that we have seen successful uh, very well, for example, here in Finland, Startup Foundation, uh, or in US, Kaufman Foundation, so the, uh, or uh, many other foundations where the initial capital that was given uh, to establish the operations is rather put in an investment fund where only the returns of investment can be used. So the operational fixed cost 
can that can cannot be more than what the capital capital return of the investments are on average. So by design, the fixed costs are covered by the capital uh, return of investments, and this capital is not to be invested into startups, uh, at least not all of it. So it should be uh, invested uh, in the in the, the more less risky financial markets. Um, but that is a proven model as well. And of course, um, uh, also from the, the new revenues that come from new functions, specifically outside of own ecosystem and outside of uh, uh, contributing organizations, uh, also that can be put further uh, in, in times where there are not clear action plans to spend that wisely into the capital uh, pool where it increases the return of uh, investment uh, gains uh, for the operations in the in the future. So it's a it's a good place to put it. So that is really how to build uh, things uh, sustainable by design. So to avoid the failure that is there by design. So. And to get this, uh, to get people to commit, to get the organizations, it's all about building an attractive vision for the whole ecosystem level. That is also real, realistic, meaning that it has the elements of sustainability by design. And then it's all about proving it step by step. So instead of doing uh, big things by announcing that we will do this, but with the model that is sustained to fail, uh, that is designed to fail, that doesn't include the sustainability by design. The size doesn't matter. It will fail if it doesn't have uh, the, the logical approaches, unless it's lucky. Because the nature of building unvalidated things and the nature of building things that are not proven in the specific market, when there's too many unknown things, it is designed to fail. And luck is not a good strategy. Hope is not a good strategy. There are needed things. You can increase the luck by being more active. Uh, you can't really do much with hope other than make you feel better. But what you can do is, is to get um, uh, a logical things where you can evaluate the design itself and see, will this work? Is it theoretically, logically going to have an opportunity to work, or is it designed to fail? So to get to that, there needs to be enough reason. So the mission and vision needs to be strong and motivating and understandable and clear where, where both people and organizations actually want to commit. So it's not only has to be something that we have to do, that's the time when having like really too far behind of others or like really being in a very troubled situation where things are done just because there's no other choice anymore. But if, if uh, working on normal situation, there really needs to be an attractive vision. Otherwise, people don't really see need or uh, hard to find the motivation to go commit to it at organization level, individual level, and so forth. So once it's operational over time, iterating business model based on the value you are able to create. And, uh, and at the same time, iterating and growing based on things getting to work one by one. And any additional things, additional budget funds, additional grants, additional things can help to try more to do a next thing, but it should not be used for the core. And then specifically moving towards data-driven approach to leverage ecosystem data business models. So the digital world sometimes tends to be forgotten, but at the same time, it's always there, it's always accelerating, and it's the area that uh, brings new opportunities, new efficiencies, but those cannot be used and benefited from if there is nobody doing it uh, for real. So just 
of course, a good starting point for the for the whole exercise is to do the business model canvas and iterate the business model canvas uh, model for um, for the whole ecosystem level as well. And this is an exercise that should be a a permanent function of the ecosystem forum and ecosystem operators collaboration in a periodical manner. And the other tool, the, the platform canvas, so this is more when looking at uh, the platform business models is then to having another time canvas and we share these tools of course with everyone uh, with more details uh, on how they work and how they can be used to build that uh, that role between where the contributing organizations fit customers side user side so for example even if we consider uh, of course entrepreneurs and talent as the main customers but on the customer side also investors mentors advisors uh, because they are more attached to the companies and then on creators producers we have the support of providers functions partners are more from the perspective of the key stakeholders the public private bigger actors as well as the platform owners partners can also be the international uh, collaborations with other ecosystems and so forth uh, but it really helps to to look at it from the perspective of what are our key elements that we operate as an operator? And what are the key functions that we do? What is the value uh, proposition that we give as an ecosystem operator for its, of these directions? And what is the value creation that we actually create the value for? And that is the, the, the place to put the KPIs in place. And look at from each of the different perspectives. And of course, uh, this is this is something that uh, that is an exercise as well that should not only be done uh, as a foundational element for ecosystem operators' role, but also as a periodical, ongoing exercise to be repeated uh, in the in the part of the ecosystem overall orchestration activities.